about it, it can sometimes come across as though humanity has evolved backwards over the past 50 years when it comes to aviation. I mean, genuinely, take a look at this beautiful Concorde, an airliner that we as humanity built in 1969. A plane that could move its passengers over 100 people at speeds of up to two times the speed of sound. Very, very fast. And what do we have now, 55 years later? Well, we've gotten rid of the Concorde now, and instead of flying fast, we have planes that meander at, you know, very, very much far below the sound barrier. We have planes that have doors falling off. Great advancement to humanity. I mean, okay, there's a reason why the Concorde isn't flying around anymore. It just didn't make any money, it wastes too much fuel. Look at, look at those afterburners, that just literally eats fuel. Like genuinely. And one other problem of the Concorde is that it was very, very loud. Not necessarily from the inside, but from the outside. Right now, we are flying above the speed of sound at Mach 1.7 here. A speed that would absolutely be able to terrorize the whole region that we're flying above. Here I've got a video filmed from a cruise ship in the early 2000s filming a Concorde just as it crosses the sound barrier. Listen to that. Yes, of course, the sonic boom. The problem when you hit the air at speeds above the speed of sound. A, in general, very, very interesting topic. It's not super easy to explain it in a short little video. But to simply put it, the, the reason why supersonic planes like this thing are so loud in their shock waves they create is because of all the air they're pushing against. Uh, good explanations versus their one. Which is why the Concorde could only fly above the speed of sound over water, over oceans. Which is why the plane pretty much only flew transatlantic route where there was a lot of water where it could unleash its power and also scare a lot of fishermen, I would imagine. This is good. So what are the number one goals for nowadays researchers to build another supersonic plane like this is to break that barrier. Quite literally, the idea of making a silent supersonic plane that doesn't completely terrorize the whole region. And while we have such a plane now, everybody, it is quite aviation news. The X-59 quiet supersonic aircraft by NASA and Lockheed Martin and Skunk Works, who did the SR-71, was just formally debuted. Yeah, they showed this very experimental airplane on Friday here. Although the X-59, you know, isn't that new of an idea. We've already known what it's supposed to look like since 2016 when the whole concept was shown. A lot of testing has been done and a lot of developing. Check this out. This is the X-59 now in a wind tunnel. But the exciting news now is that this concept of the X-59 has now been turned into the real thing, into the real deal. This plane can fly. The plane that can change the world of flying. Now, as of right now, just the plane has been shown. It hasn't flown yet. But everybody, in today's video, we are going to fly it. Well, how, you might ask? Well, it's a little known fact that NASA has actually made a flight simulator version of the X-59 quite a while ago in 2018. And you can see, oh, this flight simulator looks like X-Plane. And it is true. Quite a while ago, they have released an X-59 for X-Plane flight simulator, which sounds like the coolest thing ever. I mean, NASA developed an X-Plane add-on. Let's take a look at it. Oh, yes. And we're already spawned onto the runway with this beautiful single engine plane it looks very, very much like it does in real life. I mean, not maybe not the most um, beautiful model. Why there's their ATC talking back? I don't want that. Everybody, things are looking great. As you can see, well, <laughs> what does this plane look like? Well, it's very long. It has a very, very long nose, an incredibly long nose, in fact. I mean, compare that to where the nose landing gear sits, which already implies that the, like, the center of gravity should be all the way down there. So this nose should be quite light, I imagine. Otherwise, it would tip over. And though this should already be the reason why this plane will be very quiet as a supersonic airplane. It doesn't really have a lot of aggressive area that impacts the air and can make it boom. Wow, this is a very scientifically accurate video. No, genuinely, I mean, that's the very basics of how it works. Makes sense. This airplane just neatly penetrates the air and therefore can fly very nicely. I mean, you know, let's go ahead and fly it. I mean, we have this beautiful Delta wing. I mean, that's a very supersonic thing. Doesn't look too far derived from planes like the Concorde. Let's get into the cockpit, which is only too deep. Some G1000 panels, some from a Cessna 172. I don't think that will be what we will see in the real deal. And well, I guess let's 
fly it. Let's go full power. And of course, as you can see, we have a beautiful afterburner engine, which has apparently enough power that if you put the brakes now, we'll definitely uh, put the nose into the ground. Let's maybe go ahead and release the brakes just like that. We can do that. And through this screen, we can see everything here, yes. As you can see from the outside, while we're taking off, this might just be the wrong time to explain anything. But you can see in real life, there not really is much to see for the pilots. Obviously, for aerodynamic efficiency and also sleekness when it comes to penetrating the air. There's no, like, windshield or anything. No, there is a camera. This airplane will use an enhanced flight vision system, like EVS system, that will have a 4K camera and make the outside look quite visible to the pilots. Pilot. So we can see that here. This is a camera. This is good. Let's maybe go ahead and see if we can take off. We're at 220 knots already. And yes, there we go. We're able to take off just fine. You know, like in most experimental planes, landing gear kind of looks a bit goofy when it comes up. That's just what you have to do with it. But it sits sleekly here in the fuselage of the airplane. And there we go. We can already fly. And damn, this plane is like a... I mean, we call it the A340, the flying pencil, but... This is the one. Beautiful, and we're already gaining quite a lot of altitude. This is a very powerful airplane. Yes, we need to reach around 50,000 feet in order to actually gain some speed. A speed that we can reach very quickly. I mean, check this out. I mean, we've got a single engine. And there we go. Just like that, we're at 0.9. Mm -hmm. And just like that, there we go. Now we're at 60,000 feet. Yes, according to Wikipedia, this plane will actually read a speed of up to 1.4 Mach. I don't know how to do it at 55,000 feet. While being not loud at all. Yes, expected to be 1,000 times quieter than current supersonic aircraft. Really, really good. Now you can see, uh, oh, we've actually lost a little bit of speed. This is good. We can perhaps pull some stunts at this kind of speed. I mean, it's a flying pencil. It doesn't really care. Okay, now that we've conducted a supersonic flight, it's time to maybe do some test flying in general. Yes, we shall ask the question, well, could the pirates use this plane? <clears throat> Let's go full power in our engine. I think it should be fast enough. All right, it just goes immediately. We do have a flap surface, right? We actually do. Yes, it does have flaps as our plane, which make, I mean, that could make it quite usable. There you go. We've already taken off. I wouldn't really take the X-plane model that we do have here as a proper simulation of the physics, but there you go. Looks great. And we can once again have a great look at how this cockpit looks. Yes, viewing the frontal view of the plane through a screen. This is almost like flight simming, but like better. All right, good. Let's take a look now. Uh, maybe just uh, revert back to landing here. There we go. There we go. Losing speed just like we should. You know, there we go. The flaps are out. Now losing speed as we should. As the flaps are out, things are absolutely beautiful. I mean, while we're flying quite nicely, it's 200 knots. Actually, this plane flies quite well. I didn't really expect it to be able to fly at like below 200 knots because I mean, look at this thing. Look at that wing. I reckon the um, lift that is able to create at slow speeds is not high. Maybe in the future you could introduce some sort of a swept wing. Let me go ahead and land now. Doesn't have reverse thrust to serve plane. I don't think it's really made for this kind of stuff that we're now putting it to. Okay, uh, that's, uh, I should give up on this dream. Why have I even done that? All right, this seems a bit better now. Yeah, you know what? Actually, I'm quite pleased to tell you that this airplane also flies well at slow speed. Look at that. Let me check this out. We're at 160 knots. This airplane is quite comfortable here. We can even put the flaps down. Yeah, this thing can fly slower than the Concorde. I genuinely didn't expect that. But, you know, you have to be honest, though. This plane doesn't fly nearly as quick as the Concorde does as well. I mean, the Concorde was still 0.6 of a mark faster. But come on, let's do this. There we go. We are uh, nearing the stall. But still, this plane flies quite comfortably. And yes, of course, we're through the camera even. The poppy lights work. Yes, slow flight does work just fine. I didn't expect it of such a pointy airplane. Am I right? All right. We have a bit of runway to use. Come on. There we go. Nice. 130 knots even the spring flies well. All right, when are we gonna touch down? All right, there you go, that's how we do it. Okay, we only have wheel brakes, it's quite obvious. Which is why I expect the real plane to feature some sort of a parachute system. I think the flying that we've just done doesn't fully reflect the airplane and its capabilities. But there we go, great. Something you do really wanna make sure though is not to brake too hard in order to not hit that nose on the ground. Beautiful. So everybody, right now the status update is that we're just waiting for Lockheed Martin to perform some more tests on this airplane. Engine running tests, maybe some taxi checks. We'll probably maybe see this plane on the air, maybe this year, which is then followed by the first really supersonic quiet flight. Something I can't wait for. So everybody, thank you so, so much for watching this quiet video and I'll see you guys tomorrow. As always, good night.